The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. As Becky mentioned, uh, Pastor Joe's not able to be here today. Today was actually supposed to be a day where Pastor Joe would be preaching, and sometimes in our series, sermon series, we have a, a Sunday that's kind of out of the series, a day where our campus pastors have a chance to just communicate to their community and, and bring a word that they have, uh, that they believe that God has put on their hearts. And so today was to be that day for Joe, and he was really brokenhearted not to be able to be here. So I invited him, hey, would you put together maybe a two, three minute video and we can play it so you can still say something to the community and then I'll kind of tag on and do your sermon notes for you. Well, Joe uh, just couldn't hold himself back. And so what I got was a 19 minute sermon. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, first I'll be honest, I was a little cagey about, can we do a video sermon in service? We don't like to do that. It's not something we've opted to do. Some other churches do it and that's fine, but it's, we value the in-person preaching. Uh, however, as I watched this, I just was so struck by a few things. By Joe's obvious love for you all and his deep desire to bring this word to you. For his love for Jesus and his love for studying Jesus. His belief that careful attention to who Jesus is according to the scriptures will not only give us more head knowledge, but will invite us into a heart relationship with the Jesus we read about in the book of John. So I will, uh, we're going to watch this sermon together, and you'll see my notes intercut. I've put slides in where I've taken extensive notes because jo Joe's going to give you a lot of content, a lot of things that he's noting in these first 14 verses that we learn about who Jesus is and then what that means for us. So I would invite you to take that sermon insert, sermon notes insert you got in your handout and have that ready to go, or perhaps you already picked up one of these study guides on your way in. This book is going to go with the series in John that's going to take us all the way past Easter, and every week there will be space to write notes from the sermon, notes from your small group time that will cover the same material, notes from daily worship, where our daily Bible blog will also be walking through John. We're going to really take seriously that if we pay careful attention, if we study together who Jesus is in the scriptures, our relationship with the living Savior Jesus will also come alive. So let's watch together and take notes together and experience and learn more about who our Savior is as Joe brings us the word. Happy New Year. I'm so sorry that I can't be with you today. But as you may have already heard, uh, I tested positive for COVID last week and so now has Peggy. So I would ask that you pray for Josh and Tori as um, they are, Josh is still living with us and Tori's kind of taking care of us from afar, and so that they wouldn't get it, and um, that they would be safe. And I appreciate your prayers, too, for a, a, a quick recovery. Actually, I feel pretty well um, now. It's, it's been a little bit of a rough week, but it's, um, I'm on the downside, and I expect to be back at work um, soon. And so uh, thank you for your prayers in advance. 
We begin uh, today with an, a passage in John, and we start a new series in John. And I'm, I'm very excited about this, as, as we start a new year, that we can begin to look fresh at Jesus. Uh, who is Jesus, and what do we know about Jesus, and what's our relationship with Jesus look like? We have a tremendous opportunity as we head into this year. We're going to be looking at the, the book of John from now until about Easter. And so um, there are some things that I want us as a community to really focus on. Every time you hear a passage from John in this next series, every time you hear a sermon, I want you to ask two very important questions. What do I now know about Jesus? And what does this say about my relationship with Jesus? And so the passage that you heard today is a, a great place for us to start. And, and I'm going to actually start with verse 14 and then go back up to the top because I think this sets the stage for really where we need to go. Verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So I want to start here because it sets the stage for what the rest of the passage has already told us. And it sets the stage by telling us that the Word is Jesus. Jesus is God. And so just let that sink in just for a moment. As we talk about the Word, we talk about Jesus, the live, breathing, living Jesus. And as we talk about Jesus, we talk about God. And God, the eternal, the one who literally breathed life into everything, that's Jesus. And so as we walk through this passage, we're going to learn a little bit more about God, and we're going to learn a lot more about Jesus, who he is, what's his character, and what he means to us, and what we mean to him. And so as we walk through this, and I would invite you to take out your Bibles, and I invite you to bring your Bibles for this whole series so that you can literally write in your own Bible, mark markings in the sides, um, so that you can go back and you can find things and you can underline specific things that it teaches us about Jesus. Jesus is really the foundation of everything. It's what sets us apart. It's who we are. We are followers of Jesus, followers of the Christ, Christians. And so as we move forward, we are going to push in, in this new year into really expanding, I hope anyway, expanding our view of God. Who is God? I know for me personally... I often lose track of how big my God is, and I get side, sidestepped about all kinds of other things going on in my life, about COVID going on in our community, about um, political stuff, about stuff that's going on at church, about what songs we sing, about all kinds of different stuff that's going on in our communities, in our families, and in our lives. And sometimes we lose sight that we can have a relationship with the God of the universe. And as we walk through this, I'll, I'll, I think you'll see that it's bigger than we even imagine. It's, it's, it's actually, it's really exciting. And to be able to see that God loves us so much that he came to be a part of us. So let me start with verse 1 now and go further. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word of God, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He, he was with God in the beginning. Now, it's, it's more than just a tongue twister. There's so much right, even right here. In the beginning was the word. Remember what the word is? The word is Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God. I thought Jesus was God. Ah, it says that. And the word was God. Jesus was God. So Jesus and God is the same thing. Now, that doesn't diminish anything about what we already know. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are all God, and Jesus is God. And the Father is God, and the Spirit is God, and they are one, but they are separate. But here we want to be very clear that Jesus is God. And we have an opportunity as we walk through John to literally get a first a view from a first-hand account. John was the disciple that Jesus loved. And so we're getting an account from somebody who was an insider, 
who knew Jesus, who loved Jesus, and who Jesus loved. And so as, as we go through this, we're going to have insight into who Jesus is because it's coming from John, who is someone we can trust that knows Jesus. So what do we already learn? That Jesus is the Word, and the Word is God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus was with God, Jesus is God, and Jesus has been with God since the beginning. <clears throat> Verse 3, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. So often I think about God, creator God, God the Father, as being the great creator, and that the one who, I, you've heard me say often, who breathed life into the world, who literally spoke and life came to be. But according to John, Jesus is a big part of that. Jesus is the one who brings the world together. He is the one who created it. Through him, through Jesus, all things were made that are made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Jesus is part of the creator God. Jesus is creator. And so the Jesus that we know, the Jesus that we can have a relationship with, is so powerful that he literally creates us, creates everything we know. He is the glue that holds us together, that holds the world together. Jesus is. Moving forward. Verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. So again, we see that Jesus is life. So not only is he eternal life, and we think him often as eternal life, the sacrifice that he made for us, being um, a baby, coming down and being born, stepping out of heaven and becoming the incarnate God, the God-man, and yet then going to the cross and choosing to die so that we could have eternal life. All of that is true. That is absolutely still true, and we'll, we'll see that further on as we go. But he also is the giver of life, the breath that we breathe, the heartbeat in our chest, the very life that we live in, that exists, is because of Jesus. And so not only do we owe him eternity, not only do we owe him our eternal life, but we owe him our life. Our, he literally gave us life. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall owe not overcome it. The idea that Jesus is light, so not only is he life, but he is light. And you often hear people talk about when you watch the light in somebody's eyes go out, that they've lost all hope, that they've lost any connection with people, that they have lost um, any, any reason to continue on. They've lost that connection with, with the eternal, with life, with God, with Jesus. But yet we have an opportunity to have that life and that light that comes back from Jesus that keeps us moving forward. So that, and that light is so strong that darkness cannot overcome it. So the idea that if, if you're in darkness and a light comes on, you suddenly, everything is illuminated. And uh, as some of you have heard me before say that, you know, it's not so much that it's the darkness that we're afraid of, it's the unknown. But once we have the light, then the unknown becomes known. But Jesus is the source of that light, and everything can become known. We can know him for who he is. We can know God for who he is, because he's human, he's personal, he's Jesus. And the darkness cannot overcome it. He is so strong. He is so powerful that the darkness cannot overcome it. So if we even go to the far end and say that the darkness, looking at possibility of evil being the darkness, Satan being the darkness, that Jesus is so strong, the light of Jesus, that even the evil one cannot overcome that light. I'm going to jump now down to verse 9, just as far as time. Um, verse 6, 6 through 8 talks a little bit about John the Baptist and that he's a witness. If we have time, we'll come back to that, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to have time. <clears throat> and I'm hoping my voice can continue to be strong enough. So verse 9, so we're, the light, we know the light comes from Jesus. The light is Jesus himself. The true light that, that gives life, no, the true light 
that gives light to everyone has come into the world. He was born on Christmas Day. That's Jesus himself, the true light. And he has come into the world. Now, this is what we have to figure, see here, is that verse 10, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Now, this could be a very, very sad statement. I mean, a very difficult verse. So, even though the world was made by Jesus, the world didn't recognize him. And that, that really shouldn't surprise us. We know that most of the people that we know don't know Jesus. And they don't recognize what Jesus has to offer. Many of my friends have no idea. When I talk about Jesus, it's, it's a blank stare. They don't know him. They don't recognize him. They don't see life in him or light in him. And, um, and sometimes it, it surprises me. And it feels like the older I get, the more prevalent it is that people don't know who Jesus really is. And there's all kinds of stories and myths and fairy tales about Jesus. But the true Jesus, they don't know. But it gets worse. So we keep going, and it says this, verse 11. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not recognize him. So when we read the story of Jesus, and we're going to read through through the book of John, we will find that he came to God's people. And we can go clear back in the Old Testament, and we can follow the, the line, the lineage of who God's people are. But then he also then includes us, adopts us, and we are part now of God's people. So as, as I read this verse, he came to his own, his own creation, his own people, the people that he chose, and we did not recognize him. And so the hard question for those of us sitting in church, is it talking about us here? Are we his own? Are we the people that God created? Are we the people that God chose? Are we the people who, that we profess Jesus, but we don't really know Jesus? We know a lot about Jesus, but we don't really know Jesus. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not recognize him. So let me get personal. Do you know Jesus? Do you recognize Jesus for who he truly is? But then the good news, verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gives the right to become children of God. You hear that in our confession that when we confess our sins, if we believe in Jesus, that he gives us the right to become children of God. And with being children of God, the inheritance of God, everything that he wants to give us as his own children. So again, do you believe that? Do you believe in Jesus or do you just know about Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is God? Do you believe that Jesus is all-powerful? Do you believe that Jesus can do anything? Even in our lives, even in this situation, it, sometimes we need to really think through about what that word believe means. There was an old story about a, a, a tightrope walker who literally tightroped across Niagara Falls. And he stretched out the, the wire and everybody was you know, excited and fearful and all those things. And he worked his way across Niagara Falls and everybody was so excited. And so he said, um, do you believe that I can take somebody in a wheelbarrow across Niagara Falls? And he had pounds of sand. He had little bags of sand that he was ready to put into the wheelbarrow and push it across. And he did so. And then he came back and he said, okay, so do you still believe that I can take somebody across Niagara Falls? Do you believe that I can do that? And he dumped the sand out and he said, if you believe, get in. Are you ready to get in? Are you ready to throw everything you have? Are you ready to believe to the point where you're ready to get in? Verse 13, <clears throat> so we are children of God. Children born, not born of natural descent, nor human decision, or husband's will, but born of God. 
when we believe in the name of Jesus, when we recognize who Jesus is, when we receive Jesus, we are children of God and we, we are because we are children of God, it's not because of anything that we've done. It's because of what God has done. It's because of God's will. And then we finally get back to verse 14. We come full circle. And the word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. Jesus became flesh as a little baby and made his living, made his life here on earth. Made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. Jesus came to glorify the Father. He came to save us. He came, his main reason was so that we might be redeemed, that the Father might be glorified. And then that's Jesus' glory. So he came to be glorified. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. He came full of grace, full of grace and truth. And that's an interesting dynamic, both truth and grace. We often struggle with how do we put both of those things together. When we see somebody do something wrong, we want to point out the truth to them and make sure they know what's right and that they don't do what's wrong again. And sometimes when we think about grace, we think about forgiveness and letting things go and not, and not letting um, somebody have a, an offense and we, we say it's okay. But Jesus comes in truth and grace. He doesn't give up either side. There is truth. There is a solid truth, a plumb line. This is what truth truly is. And we'll discover more of that as we go through. But he also came full of grace, not giving us what we deserve and, not, and holding back what we do deserve. So Jesus comes. God comes. The all-powerful one comes full of truth and grace for you and for me. So what did you learn about Jesus? What do you know now that you didn't know before or are reminded before and are maybe willing to take a next step? How's your relationship with Jesus? Are you willing to step in, get into the wheelbarrow, believe to move a little bit closer to where God might have you? Again, I'm sorry I can't be with you in person. I, I so long to be there. But I'm thankful for this technology and the opportunity to at least speak with you and to let you know that I love you and that I, I so look forward to being back with you again next Sunday. But as we begin this series, for myself, for this community, for all of us, I would pray that we would get to know Jesus for who he truly is, biblically. That as we walk through the book of John, what did we learn about Jesus and what do we learn about our relationship with him as we walk through this? Let's pray in response to what we've heard. Jesus, it is so easy for us to settle for less than who your word tells us you are. Sometimes, Lord, we, we settle for just not paying attention, for not knowing, for having thin understanding of who you are and what you have come to do in our lives and what you have called us to. Other times we can study and study and study and reflect and find ourselves recreating you, casting you in our own image, choosing which parts of you we like and which parts of you we'd rather leave to the side. But I pray, Lord, that you would, by the power of your spirit, give us the faith to get into the wheelbarrow, so to speak. That as we enter into this time of study, this season of paying careful attention to who you are and to what you are calling us to do next in our relationship with you, that you would give us the courage to face the parts of who you are, what you have said, what you have done, the things you call us to, that we'd rather not have to deal with. The parts that we don't understand, the parts we don't like, the parts that will ask us and require us to change. Lord, would you give us the faith to believe? Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and minds that are open and hearts that are soft and ready to be formed and shaped by who you are, what you have accomplished and what you are doing today in the world still. And we pray this all in your name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing in